Hey guys, Juan Novato here with a quick color grading tutorial. Uh, this clip was given to me by a friend. Uh, he has the Canon 5D Mark IV, and as you know, that records in DCI 4K, which is 4096 by 2160, and it records at 8 bit 422. So it gives you a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to color grading if you want to do a deep, exaggerated uh, grade. Um, you can kind of pull that off of 8-bit 422 if you really want a, a, a deep grading experience, like really go nuts. Uh, you're going to need footage that will record at anything above 10-bit uh, and at 422. Uh, the 422 doesn't, I guess it gets, it goes up to 444, four, 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 I guess. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, those cameras are very expensive. Um, the only thing that comes close to... Uh, uh, a, a good uh, camera that gives you video for uh, deep grading would be the Panasonic GH5, which records at 10 bit 422. With that said, uh, let us begin. Now, this is my workflow. I use uh, two different tools. Today, we're going to be using for color grading uh, Adobe's built in Lumetri color. Lume Lumetri color. I'm sorry, not Lumetri. Lumetri color. Uh, first, my, like, like I said, my workflow is to correct the image first before I color grade. Um, and this clip was given to me by my friend. He exposed this perfectly. Uh, as you can see, this is in, in New York. Uh, it's playing a little bit slow on the playback because I'm also doing screen recording. Uh, so I'm going to turn on the proxy here. Hopefully that would help. Uh, I know they said never color grade on a proxy, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to, we're going to have to do just that. Okay. How I like to start is, um, is to find the brightest part of the video or the image. When I say image, I mean video. Now, you know, huh. uh, find the brightest part of the image and bring down the brightness on that. Then find the darkest part and then work with that. How I like to do it is with something called RGB curves. Uh, now it's probably deep in the menu. So just, you know, uh, go to effects, hit the search, put RGB and there it is RGB curves. Make sure your clip is highlighted and then double click on that. Uh, and to make sure that is on there again, make sure your clip is highlighted and go up to effects control. And there it is. So here is uh, my image with the brightest part of the uh, of the image already in um, on on screen so uh, we're gonna work with the master here we're not gonna work with any of this this is for more advanced stuff uh, again we're just doing Luma correcting correcting the exposure again the exposure already looks good so uh, we're just going to help it along so here's your Lumetri scope Lumetri scopes I'm sorry I keep pronouncing it that way uh, these are I R E uh, IRE uh, levels here. Uh, basically, what's safe to show on a television screen? Not so much a monitor, but you know, I like working uh, with these scopes because I used to make commercials for television uh, back in New York City. Okay, so at 100 already, that's a uh, too much. It's gonna blow out any screen that uh, you put this on, television-wise. Uh, so I like to take the high bright parts and then bring it down a uh, nice rule of thumb for me you could be different is around 80 uh, let me show you the before and after there uh, so you could get away with uh, anything a little bit above 80 which is probably what I'm gonna do here okay so there, you, there we go uh, and as for the dark parts uh, of this you're gonna want to bring that information back a little bit bring it up to about 10 have it sitting on 10 so what I like to do is um, pretend there's a rectangle here and the rectangle starts at 10 and ends at 80 and uh, that's basically what you want to do but here you know I went a little bit above that that's okay now, going back down to what is the darkest part of this uh, footage here, which is the beginning. Here we see the lantern. This is uh, dark. This is basically the darkest part. 
here. Um, so what we want to do is bring it up a little so that we could sit on the 10 line of the ER IRE scale. Uh, so just a little bit right there. Uh, how did that affect the light side? Not bad at all. It actually brought some more um, detail in the uh, shadows and in, in the dark parts of the uh, of the image. This was you can't really help it. That's way too dark. All right, moving on to the next clip, uh, which is basically the same spot. Um, so we're gonna have to be doing some color matching here. Uh, again, I'm gonna start with the brightest part of the image. Uh, bright meaning this, not so much this, this is why this is peaking. And of course, this is basically just a proxy here. It's basically is measuring everything on screen. So if I take that out, that goes away. Um, but like I said, you know, system resources and whatnot. Uh, so basically what you're gonna, what you're gonna be, the decisions you're gonna make is technical and artistic, two different types of decision. Right now we're working on the technical so uh, we're gonna go back to effects and now that this is highlighted, we can double click here. And it is in our, okay, there it is. All right, so we're going to basically bring back the information in the dark parts. Uh, let's see. Technically rest it on the 10, 10 IRE. Uh, and I'm sorry, this was the dark part. Eh, it's still good then. Okay, and this is the bright part. Uh, and then we're gonna bring that down uh, or up actually. As you can see, th this is the majority of your image, which is bright. So we're gonna bring that up to, uh, we're gonna sit it at 80 or at least close to 80. And we're gonna do before and after. So basically what I did was just, you know, by bringing up the, the, the darks, I, I brought back some uh, details in, in this. As much detail as a 8 bit 4 to 2 footage can give you. Uh, again, this is why it's very important to, if you're going to do this, do it right. Get a good camera that can record. And it's not, it, I'm telling you, it's very, it's very expensive cameras, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And the closest thing that, it ca that, that, that you can financially uh, uh, get that uh, it would help you with this type of grading that I'm doing is the the GH5 again 10 bit 4 to 2 a lot of data to play with you don't you don't have to worry about um, losing information but it is what it is I got a uh, 8 bit 2 to 4 to 2 uh, footage here all right so I'm now I'm just matching the lights and these are matching perfectly actually um, so there is the, there it is. That's the technical, uh, part of the correcting the, the brights and darks of, uh, the image. Now we're going to move on to the art. Well, actually, if we go to basic, I, what, um, what you want to do is, uh, come here, uh, and then white balance. I could click. I could, but it's not. It's not really going to do anything. Something neutral. Notice how nothing changed really. Uh, I don't, so I don't know what to deal with that is. So I just punch it in manually, like around. Uh, let's see, you can go crazy and see what what will work. Um, for me, what worked for me was, uh, I believe it was five. Probably won't see much of a difference, but because of the YouTube compression, but is there? I promise you. Uh, let's see, what else can I do? I, I can bring up the shadows, or maybe just keep it the same. Because if I do that, then the scopes. Will... What is that? 11, 11.3. I did see that I bring it brought back a little bit of more detail here. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's using uh, Lumetri to help out the RGB curves. Uh, and now we're going to get into the color grading part, which is, uh, let's see, just making sure I'm having a look at the image one last time. Okay. Which is down here in creative. Now I could apply a preset 
I have a whole bunch of presets here. I don't want to do that. And I accidentally did it. One second. There you go. Um, what we're going to, the best preset is the one you make your own. Uh, so with that said, we're going to, uh, let's see, sharpen. If, if I remember correctly, 50 is what worked. I have, I have done this before. I'm um, just remembering when or what it was that I did. Okay, bring vi Vibrance up. Uh, let me take off Proxy. Bring Vibrance up and how about Saturation to 120 something? Okay. We will tweak this later when we go down to the, uh, to the curves. Now, physically speaking, when the sun hits, um, anything bright or white in this case, these little columns here, any of the white parts here, it is, it'll be a little bit, uh, a little bit orange, which is why I did the white balancing, but not too much because I'm going to do the rest of it here. As you can see, not too much though. Bring it back down. Okay. And eat. The same thing uh, because of the blue atmosphere, actually. Um, shadows that are cast are really more blue than anything. On a sunny day, cloudless sunny day. So there. I don't know if you can see the difference. Again, YouTube compression. You gotta love it. All right. So I did bring a little bit of blue into the shadows, like the sun would create in real life. Uh, and now I can just mess with the uh, tint balance. I know it's hard to see. <laughs> okay. I think I like this a little better. I like this a little better. So for me, Every situation is going to be different. For me, in this situation, 27.3 work. Now I'm going to go down to curves, and I'm going to help out. Um, well, actually, not help out. This is now this is an artistic decision. Yes, technically, rest on the 10, rest on the 80, or maybe go a little bit above or a little below that. That's the technical. Artistically, rules are meant me to be broken. So uh, with that said... I am going to bring down the darks because now we're grading. Now we are grading. Bring down the darks here to almost almost rest at zero. No, you don't want to rest it at zero. But do bring it down. So you notice how I brought it down. The darks did become dark, but you didn't lose that much detail because RGB curves over here helped you get it back. So I, I still see some brick detail here. Uh, as for the white, well, again, rules are meant made to be, are meant to be broken or made to be broken. So a little bit above ninety. Okay, just a little bit above 90 IRE. This blue is the chrominance level. You don't have to pay it, you know, really pay attention to that. Um, and now for the uh, hue saturation curves here. Now, what I did was I brought this up some more and you notice that if I go back, uh, it brought more green and yellow to the grass. The sky became a little more blue. Um, I want to get some more details in back into, uh, this, um, so what I'm going to do is lock this off here, lock this off here, and then only affect the mid tones. So when I do that, let's see if I go up, I lose detail because it blows it out. If I go down details in the mid tones, come back. So there you go. Uh, we can mess with the color wheels here. We move on to the color wheels, uh, bring down the shadows a little more and still not lose detail. This is why it's important to do this first. There's still details in the br in this brick. I don't know if you can see it again due to uh, YouTube compression, but the details are still there. Uh, as for the mid tones, let's bring this up. 
and for the highlights i think i want to bring those up to see how it's still not touching uh, 100 chrominous levels might be but not the literal uh image all right uh and now everybody's favorite the vignette everybody loves a vignette but you don't want to you know do it too much because the vignette does make you lose information in the in the shadow so far it, it looks uh good if we turn it on and off again a small little touch to the vignette does bring a nice um added image yeah what whatever you know what i'm talking about it's an art thing all right i'm gonna go back up to creative i'm gonna see again this is a uh, trial and error i'm gonna see what faded film does huh okay not much but it does affect the uh the shadows it, it brought some details back with that that's odd uh it's supposed to do an overall image let's see if i just quickly double click on this to reset yeah it brought uh details back i thought it affected the overall image okay well since i want the details back without losing uh good shadows so there you go 22.7 looks like it works i'm mainly concentrating around here the brick details around here uh they're still there so we got a nice blue sky um a little bit of orange in the brights all right i got three minutes left here folks uh all right so the best part about um making sure that the exposure matches on both clips is that the best part is that you can actually copy and then control V on a Mac and paste it here. And there you go. This is pretty much the same, th uh, pretty much the same lighting conditions. Um, it works. I, I think the, uh, the darks are a little too dark. Let me see if it matches these darks. Uh, okay, th this is just fine tuning now, folks. I'm gonna come back here. One second. Excuse, excuse me for the silence. I'm sorry about the silence. Okay, here we go. Let's do this because that that looked a little too dark to me. I think I'm gonna keep it there, while at the same time making sure it matches this. And yeah, yeah, it did. Okay. So there it is, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry this was so quick. That's pretty much the basics of color grading. Uh, I hope you, you guys uh, took something from this. I hope you guys learned something. I hope I taught you something. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. All right, that's it.